We just gotten some new information pertaining to server meshing from Benoit himself. Let's just get straight into it. Before we get into this video, I'd like to let y'all know that I'm doing a giveaway for an LTI Argo Atlas. In order to participate, all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment in any video between now and the end of December. Let's get into this video. All right, guys. So there's been a Reddit pertaining to some Q&A with Benoit, who is the head of server meshing at CIG. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the questions and answers based on that. Just to get some new information uh just a warning this is going to be a long one so just be prepared for that all right let's just get straight into it so the very first question that was asked to benoit was will the performance boost provided by server meshing static and dynamic help speed up feature development and give us the stability we're looking for moving npcs recruiting npcs increasing the number of npcs and benoit responded yes of course it will the key with server meshing is that each server will simulate fewer elements. So we already know that when fewer elements are simulated, the server performance is much better. Sure, it'll speed up development, but it also speeds up the time it takes us to deliver the patch. Yes, at a time when we're getting ready for 3.24 or 3.24.2 or 0.1, bringing the patch live is a lot of effort. That's when you discover new things. When players arrive on the server, they always do something extra. The developers have a way of testing that's more diagonal, right? Players go deeper, so it's going to help us with that. It's going to help us more buffer on performance, which is going to allow us to go a bit faster. And with more subdivision, it also gives us a degree of control we didn't have before. So in short, Benoit is saying server meshing is going to improve server performance for sure as well as development so which is good to hear as star season alpha 4.0 is right at the door so the next question is is server meshing dynamic easily achievable in terms of implementation time compared with static mesh are you confident that this will come quickly benoit says of course static server meshing includes all the technology development so the low level code that deals with the network transmission of packets that are reliable versus those that are unreliable and all this technology has been rewritten for server meshing then the concept of authority where we're in the process of ironing out all the bugs links to the transfer of authority when you change servers all the game components must respond to this change of authority there were a lot of elements that were badly done at the time or done unnecessarily that needs to be dealt with and we're dealing with that right now to continue on the subject of server meshing we're talking about massive transfers of authority let's take a large microtech mesh in its entirety and decide to bring in a server to look after new babbage alone so here we're doing a mass transfer of authority that will bring all the transfers to the new player after the dynamic meshing and development plus the reconciliation loops that will look at where the players are where there is a need for servers and which will distribute the server need to best serve the player that means not only grouping them together because there's a cost dimension involved of course if we could give each player a server we do that to sum up there's less development to be done with dynamic than static I hope we'll be able to do this quickly, but already in 4.0, there are certain elements of dynamic meshing that are implemented in a code. That means the ability to switch servers on and off, depending on whether there are players or not, which is, this is really good stuff. We're trying to make sure we have this same flexibility in 4.0 internally. We call it almost dynamic for a lack of a better word, but here we are trying to bring you as much of the dynamic mode as possible in the PU version. But I'm not worried. We're on the right track at the moment. This is really nice. This is really good stuff. So essentially the code base that they're putting in for server meshing, they're already implementing um, a portion of the dynamic version of it. And um, so it will be an easier and quicker transition to uh, move uh, the servers from static to dynamic based on what Benoit is saying here. So the third question here says, what in-game technologies are most looking forward to apart from server dynamic meshing? And Benoit says, oh, base building, big time. 
everything that's done in the background of base building, everything that's related to manufacturing. There's a lot of new databases and a lot of new services, new schema transfers and so on, because we want to make sure that if you claim a territory and build a base on it, that it's available on all shards. Nice. That's, that's really good. This is really good. That's pretty major challenge, but it's really interesting. It's going to change the game a lot along with crafting. It's going to bring a universe where it's the players who make the economy. I really think that the direction of the game needs to go in. We're well on the way to do that. And that's what I'm most excited about. I'm, I'm really excited about uh, what uh, Benoit said here. Uh, that uh, the way they're they're planning to implement base building manufacturing. All of these things are already taken into account with server meshing and stuff like that. So um man it looks like they're really trying to pull this thing off and i'm really excited for it so the fourth question is will the planet system be placed on a single mega map or will they be on separate game maps each with its own skybox benoit responds in fact each system is a part of the map we still have the mega map concept but we have a branch principle and each solar system has its own branch what we call the root of the universe, you really can't have players there. They're always in the star system. In fact, they're not quite maps as such, but it's the same concept, but it's a big data set. So as more systems are added, it's still just the streaming system that comes into play. So the next question is when you jump into the wormhole, do you move physically via coordinates or is it more of teleportation system? Benoit responds, actually, that's what's really cool. The way the jumps are made, when you enter the jump, there's a zone. Imagine it's a big ship or a big train. When the passage opens, all the players who enter the wormhole become a part of this train. And as the players move through the passage, the zone moves with you. And the moment you fall into Pyro's authority, into its branch that's when the zone and the players have arrived in pyro then the train zone is destroyed think of it as a big bus so it's really a change of coordinates one universe that's really interesting so the next question is question about the rotation of planets and whether at some point we're going to have elliptical systems do you have any answer to that benoit responds actually we already have the system in place but they're disabled for the moment really interesting okay because we've discovered a lot of effects through that it's something that we're going to try to bring back but it's not the priority at the moment our focus is on bringing the gameplay into the game but it does not have an effect if we implement this principle it will have an impact on the systems for changing zones etc Okay, that makes sense. First and foremost, we need to have something stable and solid at the moment before we consider moving on to a new system rule like this. Really interesting response. So uh, so the next question is, you managed to propose 4.0 to Evocati before Citizen Con, so congratulations on that. But aren't you disappointed that it's only happening now, whereas your goal for 2023 was a summer 2024 release? Benoit responds, yes, of course, we're not super happy with the timing, which is to say that 3.24 was really a difficult patch. It brought a lot of features, persistent personal hangers, freight elevators, systems that really touched on a lot of systems already in place that were problematic. I talked a bit about this in Star Citizen Live last time. There are really three systems in the game that are problematic. The traffic control system, the ASOP terminal system and the transit system. We all know what's wrong with that because they're a bit old and trying to update them, but we never have priority over them. And then server meshing adds to the complexity. So 3.24 already slowed us down. Then in March, during the performance testing, we identified that we had to make a detour to install the RMQ system, which gives us a better network performance. So, we're not entirely happy with our timing, but we're happy with the results in the sense that we can see that the technology is functional. It's really just a first step. As I said in my last action report, we are not chasing numbers. We are chasing a real quality of game experience. We'll go with what's most stable and functional. This is a stellar response right here. 
I'm glad that they are not, he acknowledged that they were disappointed. It seemed like they um, really did intend to drop everything by mid-year of 2024. But of course, as um, as it is in development, there's always going to be something that will show up, that will crop up, that you didn't anticipate. So they adapted. And to be honest, um, it, we're now at year end of 2024 and they're now delivering it. I'm happy with uh, uh, what they managed to do and uh, what uh, the future holds for us. All right, so that is your question and answer for uh, with Benoit pertaining to server meshing. Really exciting stuff, really good stuff to hear. You guys let me know your thoughts on what we just went through in the comments down below. Don't Before I let you go, I'd like to let y'all know that my organization, Phase One Industries, is now recruiting new and veteran players. If you are interested, you can find our Discord in the description down below. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one.